The Thwaites Glacier, also known as Doomsday Glacier, which is the size of Florida and is in Antarctica, is holding on by the skin of its teeth. Researchers estimate that the global water level might rise by up to 10 feet if it were to completely collapse. So, it's very dangerous for the whole world as many lands will be submerged in the ocean due to the rise of sea level. You're watching YouTube channel Let's Get Techie. In today's video, we are going to talk about the Doomsday Glacier, which is hanging on by its fingernails, and we'll discuss its current situation. Most importantly, we will discuss the outcomes it will have in case it collapses. So make sure to watch the video till the end. And if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon, so you will not miss any future videos we upload. Well, it all started in 2019 when NASA published a study that provided specifics about a sizable void that has developed at the base of the Thwaites Glacier. It was about a thousand feet tall and roughly two-thirds the size of Manhattan. It was a foreshadowing of the glacier's impending doom. The Thwaites Glacier is not like any other glacier you've seen. It contains enough ice to raise the level of the ocean around the world by almost a meter. In addition to this, it acts as a barrier to the glaciers that are located behind it, which, if they were to melt and flow into the ocean, would cause the water level to rise by around 10 feet. And it looks like the situation will only grow worse. Because to the ongoing warming of the Earth, Thwaites is in an extremely precarious situation, and as a result, so are we. This is one of the reasons why experts have kept a careful check on it throughout the years. The most recent findings from those keeping a close check were presented in a paper that was published in Nature Geoscience. The study indicated that things are likely to become worse in the future. In a press release, Robert Larder, a marine geophysicist working for the British Antarctic Survey and one of the study's co-authors, stated that Thwaites is truly clinging on today by its fingernails. Once the glacier recedes below a shallow hump in its bed, we should expect to witness significant changes over quite short periods in the future, even from one year to the next. There is a good chance that we will observe significant changes over relatively short timeframes. The researchers discovered that the glacier's rate of retreat in the most recent years has been significantly slower than it has been in the preceding few years. In spite of the fact that this appears to be a positive development at first glance, you should be concerned about its implications. Our results suggest that pulses of very rapid retreat have occurred at Thwaites Glacier in the last two centuries, and possibly as recently as the mid-20th century, said lead author Alastair Graham, who works in the College of Marine Science at the University of South Florida. The experts believe that as the glacier continues to thin away, the length of time that will pass before another occurrence of fast melting decreases. According to the findings of the study, there is a high possibility that another one may occur in the following decades. Graham also said that even a mild provocation directed against Thwaites might elicit a significant reaction. With a width of around 80 miles, the Thwaites Glacier holds the title of the widest glacier on Earth. However, as the Earth warms, the ice on it, as well as a significant portion of the sea ice that surrounds the poles, melts. Scientists have been worried for a long time about how quickly the glacier is getting worse because of the spine-chilling effects that will happen around the world if so much extra water is added to the seas. Scientists are also worried about the rate of Thwaites retreat because it is slow compared to the rates of change it has seen in the past when it has changed the most quickly. The researchers examined the rib-like formations located 700 meters beneath the surface of the polar ocean. They also took into account the tidal cycle for the region, which was predicted by computer models, and found that one rib must have been formed every single day. This provided them with the information they needed to comprehend Thwaites' prior retreat. The front of the glacier lost touch with a ridge on the seafloor somewhere in the previous 200 years, and it has been receding at a rate of more than 2.1 kilometers per year ever since. This event occurred over a period of less than six months. This is twice as fast as the pace that was recorded by satellites between 2011 and 2019. Once the glacier retreats beyond a shallow ridge in its bed, 
We should expect to see big changes over small timescales in the future, even from one year to the next. During an expedition in 2019, the study team, which comprised scientists from the United States of America, the United Kingdom, and Sweden, launched a state-of-the-art orange robotic vehicle dubbed REN that was outfitted with imaging sensors from the RV Nathaniel V. Palmer. This was done in order to acquire imagery as well as support geophysical data. REN, which is run by researchers at the University of Gothenburg in Sweden, set off on a 20-hour trip that was as adventurous as it was remarkable. It surveyed an area of the seabed in front of the glacier that was about the size of Houston, and it did it despite the harsh circumstances that prevailed during an extraordinary summer that was noted for the absence of sea ice. Because of this, researchers were able to visit the front of the glacier for the very first time in human history. This groundbreaking investigation of the ocean floor was made possible by recent technological breakthroughs in autonomous ocean mapping, as well as a courageous choice taken by the Wallenberg Foundation to invest in this research equipment. The photographs that Rand took provide researchers with crucial new information about the activities that are now taking place at the crucial confluence between the glacier and the ocean. It was certainly a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the scientists since they were able to physically sample the sediments on the seabed and acquire a more precise date for the ridge-like structures they were studying. Although there are still a lot of unanswered concerns, there is one thing that is certain. Whereas in the past, scientists believed that the Antarctic ice sheets were sluggish and slow to respond. This is no longer the case. Even a small jab at Thwaites may elicit a significant reaction from them. The United Nations estimates that around 40% of the world's population resides within 96 kilometers of a coastline, so they would be the first to be badly affected by the incident if it happens. Thwaites has been a source of concern for scientists since 1973, when researchers initially started investigating the ramifications of its collapse. The Doomsday Glacier is one of the broadest and one of the longest on the planet. According to NASA, the sea level would rise by up to 10 feet if this portion of the West Antarctic ice sheet melted. However, this is only a small portion of the larger ice sheet. Since 2011, scientists have recorded satellite measurements that suggest the glacier's fast-flowing trunk has sped up, thinned, and expanded. These observations have been collected by scientists over the past decade. Because of this, it is very likely that the glacier will melt quickly over the next few years once it moves away from the seabed ridge that is under the ice cap and is keeping it from sinking. The fact that the Thwaites Glacier is attached to the seabed rather than to solid land makes it more susceptible to the warm ocean currents that are melting the glacier from underneath. This in turn increases the likelihood that the glacier will melt away completely. For decades, this fragile structure has been a source of concern for scientists, earning it the moniker, the weak underbelly of the West Antarctic Ice Sheet. Last but not least, as the glacier continues to recede and become thinner, the amount of time that will pass before another episode of rapid melting decreases. The research indicates that there is a possibility of another one happening in the coming decades, which is the most troubling part of this prediction. Due to the fact that it serves as a buffer zone for the other glaciers, it will therefore cause a chain reaction in which the glaciers will melt one after the other. That's all for today's video guys. What do you think of today's video? Tell us your views in the comment section. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. See you in the next video. Until then, best wishes.